today's news. Controversy surrounding Fields Medal recipient Professor Q. Republic of East Europe mathematician P and Professor Q's co-authors share their side of the story. Hi, I'm R and you're watching News at 10 tonight. In this week's edition of Breaking News, we bring you exclusive coverage of the new controversy surrounding this year's newest Fuse Medal recipient, Professor Q, head of the Mathematics Department at University College Institute. A mathematical genius, a game changer, a rising star, or is that all too good to be true? Professor Q, who is currently head of mathematics at the University College Institute, was recently awarded the Fuse Medal, which is the mathematician equivalent of a Nobel Prize for his landmark and elegant proof of the world at ski conjecture. First conjectured in 1606 by the Polish polymath and prodigy, Jan Wolowitzki, the conjecture has been dubbed one of the greatest mysteries in mathematics. Even Einstein got nowhere close to obtaining a solution of it. However, all that changed this year when Professor Q defied the odds by publishing his seminal proof of the Wolowitzki conjecture, which unanimously earned him the Fuse Medal. Nonetheless, eyebrows were raised when it was discovered that Professor Q published his work in journal Mathematica, a journal that he so happens to be the editor of. In addition to allegations of possible abuse of power, even more shockingly, new allegations have emerged in what appears to be a classic case of plagiarism. This, according to Republic of East Europe mathematician P, who describes his side of the story in an exclusive interview with News at 10. Regarding the Wolowski conjecture, I had already published a copy of my proof on a preprint website, seeking to verify my findings with other mathematicians before deciding on whether to publish. Nonetheless, I was sure when I discovered that just one month after I put my proof on the website, Professor Q had published his work on journal Mathematica, claiming that he too had solved the Wolowski conjecture. Initially, I thought perhaps we could have both independently arrived at the proof to the Wolowski conjecture, but imagine my surprise when I read his work. The approach used was exactly the same as what I had mentioned. Moreover, according to his colleague, he mentioned that the work was in agreement with some unpublished data on the preprint website, which was evidently the proof I had written. I've seen Professor Q make other posting on the same preprint website, and as such, I firmly believe that Professor Q had read and plagiarized my work on the Wolowski conjecture. Although I have sent numerous emails to him regarding this issue, he had neither replied nor come out to make any public statement about it. We also spoke to the co-authors of the paper, Dr. S and Dr. T, who were both Professor Q's former students on their side of the story. Professor Q had been working on the proof of the Oleski conjecture for the past five years, but he was never anywhere close to a complete proof. And then one night, I received a phone call from him exclaiming that he had finally proved the conjecture. Although I was initially suspicious of the findings, he sent me an email of the proof together with some of the work that he'd done over that time. It was only after pouring through the equation that I was convinced that we had managed to solve this problem. Prof Q then asked us to compile the manuscript as soon as possible for its submission to Mathematica. And I think the choice of Mathematica was because Professor Q served as editor of the journal, and doing so, would most likely make it easier to publish the research. I mean, surely, such an important piece of work ought to be published as soon as possible, don't you think? Proving the Wallerless Key Conjecture has definitely had a huge impact on our team. The last major contribution by Professor Q to the field was almost 10 years ago. Being awarded the Fields Medal has given us the much needed recognition and encouragement to continue with our work. However, about this allegation on, of us plagiarizing his work, Professor Q did actually mentioned to us that our proof agreed with some unpublished contribution online, but ours was more complete. It was only recently that we discovered we might have used a similar approach to that of P to prove the conjecture, but I strongly believe it is pure coincidence that we arrived at this conclusion at roughly the same time. I can forge that we did not, as what we claim, plagiarize his work. As a result of P's allegations, both the Fields Medal Committee and University College Institute have now launched an inquiry into Professor Q and his team. If P's claims are indeed true, what then shall we make out of Professor Q's Fields Award? In the midst of this controversy, we have invited Professor E, 
head of the ethics department at the Ethical University to give us an overview of what are the issues and charges Professor Q might be facing if the investigations turn out to be true. Well, plagiarism is understood as taking someone else's work, ideas, language or expression and passing them off as their own without proper acknowledgement to the original source of information. Preprints are publications of the latest and original pieces of work that are posted more recently on established online repositories. Although they are not peer-reviewed like other academic journals, publications on preprints represent an important credible source of information especially in the mathematical and physical sciences. Moreover, many preprint websites do attribute copyright statuses to the author. If the accusations of P are true, that Q has used the work that P had published as a preprint for his own, this would be plagiarism, a form of scientific misconduct that cannot be tolerated. A primary concern in this incident is that there appears to be a conflict of interest where Q may be exploiting his position by publishing in a journal for which he is an editor of and by involving of his former students in order to get the work published quickly. Nevertheless, we cannot say that Q is abusing his position or even ethically wrong provided there are appropriate and explicit measures addressing the conflict of interest or reasons for his decisions. For instance, the work should be subject to the same rigour of peer review process and managed by another co-editor who has equal power to reject or accept the submitted work. The involvement of a student should also be substantiated, likely because they have worked on a conjecture with Q in the past and would hence be able to present a work in a more complete manner. Before the outcome of the investigations, it would however be too early to conclude whether an abuse of power is involved. If the accusation of Prof Q's plagiarism turns out to be true, all the authors of the publication, including Prof Q and his former students, Dr S and T, should take responsibility. From Prof Q's standpoint, he may have thought that there was no issue with taking ideas and information that is not formally published on peer-reviewed journals. Moreover, he did not actually write the manuscript of the work, but merely gave the ideas to his former students. Conversely, the two former students could have claimed that they were unaware of the work of P and that they had only acted under the request of their former supervisor, thinking that it was all original and honest data. Nevertheless, it is imperative that all authors who have been included in the published work should ensure the authenticity, validity and integrity of the full published work regardless of the subsections that they may be primarily involved in. Thank you Professor E for your expert opinions. Stay tuned as we bring you more coverage on this breaking news.